All right, kiddo. I believe we're live. Cool. Say I'm hello. I'm lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the final episode of NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Mariam. Dr. Rowan and Dr. Mariam are here to answer your questions. Thank you so much. We've received a lot of them. Mm -hmm. This might be a two hour extravaganza in the end, by which, at the end of which, we probably might be like off our faces, etc. Many test cases at already. But yeah, we wanted to try and answer all of the questions we've received, and that's just been more than the three per week that we were expecting, which has been amazing. Um, that people seem to have increasingly been like engaging and been like giving us, yeah, giving us responsibility of some kind to help them, which is really cool. Can you continue a bit of that while I just basically oh. copy paste a few things and just check we're going, we're going yes. good. Um, you can um, tell how we started this whole thing maybe a little bit? Uh, we started this thing because I moved to London, newly heartbroken, <laughs> newly single, and Mariam took it upon herself to, not newly single, that's a lie, I was single before, but newly heartbroken. Actually, I've been heartbroken for a while. But I moved back to London with both heartbreak and singleness on my mind. and. Mariam took it upon herself to try and introduce me to a lot of her friends um, and through through this we, we talked a lot about relationship problems, boy problems, but not just problems, also good things and how to navigate this environment and we started to think of it as like... Mm -hmm. about, oops, Sorry, that's us. <laughs> Um, and we started to think of it as like, you know, that having these conversations and engaging in these dialogues is actually really rare and it's really refreshing and we wanted to kind of spread that. Yes, yeah. and basically I was just shocked how many awesome, amazing uh, men in my life are, are single and I was like, well, why is that going on? And a lot of the time it came down to confidence, you know, mm -hmm. and we're just thinking if there's a way to address that and to basically find a space uh, for people to, um, to, to, to just be able to ask, you know, females <laughs> about those things so that, without it himself. being weird <laughs> without it being weird etc you yeah. know um yeah please let us know if there are some technical issues we're hoping it's not good it's gonna go without a glitch etc yes. but um yeah it should be great and also so many of our friends go like yeah yeah i'm gonna do this podcast i'm gonna create this content uh, content and they never get to that so i'm really proud yeah, with we're us really that we're like it, it kind of started as like drunken talks in a pub and that mm -hmm. but then we're like well let's just fucking do it and it's actually amazing how now you literally just with a few mics and a phone um you can just um yeah create something really new and interesting and exciting and yeah we also see this as part of this is hence the flag as this is like a wider political project we think so that um again um lonely men wouldn't necessarily just turn to the likes of uh jordan peterson etc that we can as part of the left offer such services or whatnot. Yeah. And you can be anti-fascist without being a toxic male. Yeah. 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 Like that, in fact, they just yeah. need a little confidence boost to go from not just a toxic male to like, whoa, look at that not toxic male. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we get on with this? All right. So well, look, we're going to be, I think, this is season finale. It's probably going to be longer than usual. And yeah, we're going to... You, this is not just going to be questions, we're probably going to talk about our lives as well, but anyways. Okay, um, so the first question isn't actually a question, it's a statement that we got sent and we asked for more information about it and didn't get it, so I'm going to read it out and we'll have a very brief... Um, basically it says, I am scared to date women because I have no sex drive after using a pharmaceutical. So we received this and just sadly we just didn't think there was enough information like we don't know what you're taking or what it is for um, and so we have did a bit of a call, we did make a bit of a call out asking for someone to re for this person to resubmit the question uh, however that wasn't answered so if you are watching please do feel free to, again to resubmit it and perhaps we'll do a bit more research and be able to to help you but right now there's yeah. A, yeah. I mean because there's like a lot of questions like what which which pharmaceutical and also it's not clear from the question whether you want to be dating but can't or it's a physical thing or is it a mental thing or is it all those things and basically yeah we just we would really love to help answer this but there's not enough information so sorry if you're watching and but please please send us a more detailed thing and we'll try and get back to it for sure for sure so we're doing all these in chronological order and again as always just a reminder that we don't discuss these in advance no. i basically get the questions on my curious cat screenshot them and straight and send them to Rowan, and we don't talk about them again so i have no idea what she's gonna say and that sort of thing me neither um, okay, so question number two. 
I've read a bunch of feminist stuff about how not to be a creep, but there's so little on how to flirt that I'm constantly wracked with anxiety about being creepy. I'd love not to make the first move, whether it's wanting to ask someone out or wanting to make out, but unfortunately the norm is that men initiate. So how do I initiate without being read as creepy? To be honest though, it sounds like you do. <laughs> so this is something I actually discussed with a few of my close friends, and it's gonna sound terrible, but it's what it is. This is, the, this is the, that kind of show. If someone likes you, no matter how creepy you are, they're not going to think that way. <laughs> like, literally, if they're into you, you can be as, as, as creepy gropey way. as possible and they'll fucking love it. And as creepy as you want, then they'll love it. So I think the question here is rather than, like, how am I not going to be a creep is, is um, how do I get people to like me, really? But I also think there's an interesting thing where it sounds like he... He says, like, I would rather not make the first move, but I'm forced into doing this. So it sounds like he's going outside his comfort zone because of the norm that men initiate. And I was actually thinking about a conversation that... I was going to say we, but I don't know if I can say we, that we've had recently, about how, um... Like, and I was talking about this with another friend yesterday, about how, because the norm is that men initiate, actually a lot of men are quite taken aback and don't know how to respond when women initiate. Oh, so yeah. It might then take two months before they then declare their feelings for that person. And how that's or, because, never. or never! <laughs> and how that's because men have not ever been really taught how to receive, like... That's so flirt. true. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. a discussion last night, and it's like... And if you're a lefty man, who doesn't know, who's like scared of initiating because, you know, you know, you can be creepy and therefore, but you also aren't taught how to receive flirting oh, at you, then this is great. Difficult. This is now how I will take any rejection. Oh, you know, he just wasn't in touch with his feelings. <laughs> no, but it's a thing. No, like, but it's true. That's true. Though, come to think of it, I mostly in initiated all the, all the relationships. Well, I've me been too. I mean, pretty much. And yeah. that's, yeah. Apart from my relationship with a woman, interestingly, I was very, very reticent about, but my ones with men. Which actually makes me think that, I mean, it is easier as a woman hitting on a man, because not because it's easier, but because you aren't going to be called yeah. a creep or a pervert or yeah. a rapist or a stalker, as likely. Like, you yeah. still could, and if you are those things, then don't be. But yeah. like... So, okay, so there's, in terms of flirting, uh, something that does work on me as such, and there's a very thin line. There is something called flanter, which is fl flirting and banter together, which is basically slightly taking the mick yeah, out of that person. Teasing, yeah. However, there is a very thin line between flanter and negging. Mm. And fuck negging. Mm -hmm. Ugh, and these men exist, and they neg you, and fuck them. Uh, for, for those who don't know what negging I is... I didn't know yeah. up until about six months ago, so please. Um, negging is when you kind of critique someone, but disguised as... A compliment, so like, oh, that shirt looks so good. It would look even better if you were a few sizes smaller. Something along those lines. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I oh, got. I can't even come up with a good excuse. But yeah, basically, like, it's a compliment, but really, it's, it's a critique. It's yeah. It's it. Um, it only underlines your insecurities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, oh, well, I know how you have. Um, you know. Problems with your complexion. I was literally about to yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ha I have, I do. Yeah, me too. Um, and and um, but today you look good, you yes. know. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, wow, your skin looks great. Hardly any spot. Just like yes. So basically, don't be that guy. Yeah, don't but be that flanter guy. is okay. And actually, come to think of it, like people that I'm really, really attracted to, they do, they yeah. do flanter at me a lot. Which is basically yeah, like kind of a way of like you know taking the mick out of each other, but um, in a flirtatious manner. But there is such a thin line. So yeah, please, if you can attempt not to go there. But then it's like they're taking the mick out. It's so you cold say. in here, by the way. You, Thank fuck, I'm wearing a bra. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm just like all shaking. It's not nerves anymore. But like, also, so one thing I wanted to say is that Sorry. like not everyone, not everyone is good at banter. Like that's the truth, unfortunately. And so like if say someone's not good at banter and doesn't want to be a creep, how do they then? Well, then, then again, it, I guess it's looks, right? And that's so subjective. And that's why we wanted to do this as well, the NHS mm. for Lefties Together, because what turns me on is very different from what turns Rowan on. And um, that's why there's always hope for you. Yes. <laughs> so, but just whatever makes you feel confident on that day, you know? Like, if, if, if you're going out and you feel like you're probably going to be flirting with someone, just make sure you feel like you're a million dollars. I have realized now there's, like, incense smoke, so it might be coming all a bit smoky in here but i think it's probably okay. fine yeah <laughs> awesome yeah so um 
Now, I'm just going to look at the question just once more because I feel like there are, there there are, are bits more, we're missing out. There are bits we're missing out. Right. Oops, sorry. Da -da -da -da. Mm. But unfortunately, the norm is that many. So, how do I initiate without being read as creepy? Yeah, right. That's the part. That's actually yeah. the question. Sorry, yes. we were deviating. Again. No, 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 no. But, um,. So yeah, again, I don't think it will be seen as creepy if someone is into you. So you just need to make sure that they really are. And again, you get... But, it, mm, but no, I don't want to interrupt, but I'm just like, to initiate... Basically, what my question is, is by initiate, do you mean make first contact with someone you've seen across and think is hot, or someone you know already and already have some kind of rapport with? Because they're two different things, right? Well, let's tackle this. So what, I... with someone that you've just seen quite far, like, for the first time. I have no fucking clue, that's where I'm lost. Like, with friends, turning friends into, like, people I can flirt with, like, flanting, is that what it's called? Flanter, flanter. A flanter, with flantering, I, like, I can do that with someone I already know, but if it's, like, a stranger who I'm, like, hot damn. No, but if they're attractive to you, then that's, that's it, right? But I would like never you... go up to them. No, 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 but, like, okay, if I see someone and they're attractive to me, mm -hmm. Whatever they will get, whatever sort of attention they'll give to me, I'll be like, this is great. No, but I'm saying you're the you're the person who wants to flirt with the person oh, okay. you're finding attractive. What do you do? I mean, I curb into a ball and cry because I have lots of insecurity. Yeah, I like ignore them and go to the smoking area and hope they ask me for a lighter. Yeah, no, but um, I guess. Okay, okay. This is this is actually a really good time to bring up the person that came up to us at the party on Friday. Yeah. Was well, he flirting with us? No, no. Well, well, I mean, he did say, you're the two most interesting people at this party. Yeah, well, not hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Everyone who got that party? No, that was a so very nice party. Thank you. Party. Yes, it was a really nice <laughs> party. <laughs> right, um... Right, so now we've got my true colours out the way. <laughs> God, I'm so no, but they just asked, like, some really random interesting question rather than being like, hey, how are you, you know? It was yeah. it was something, like, pretty much straight away. They were like, you know, what yeah. What have your last relationships taught well, you? Well, this, this is actually going to be the last question we yeah, answer yeah. on today's show because it's like, we had an IRL encounter mm. and we want to, like, do that justice too. Yeah. So, by the way, if you bump into us in the street, just scream a question at us. We're happy with that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but okay. again, no... Again, I guess you really need to, I suppose, understand uh, whether someone is even available. So, yeah, especially now in our late twenties, well, I'm in my late twenties. Everyone's just taken as well. Everyone's got mm. fucking partners. What's that about? I mean, our long-term plan is actually to wait till all of their happy relationships break up in their mid-thirties, and it's a... yeah, yeah. We're basically we're gonna be taking the divorcees. Yeah, we're, we're cougars. That's our that's our that's our plan. Cute <laughs> cougars. Right now we're cougars kittens. Oh God. No, we're sounding like terrible allies of women. We're not like we're not that. We are terrible. just joking we're now. Just, we're just sad and want love. <laughs> yes, and we're in our late 20s. So. 20s. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, I guess. Um, yeah, confidence, you know, feel f physically attractive on that day and ask interesting questions. And I think you don't need to worry about feeling as a creep if you think there is already a connection. In terms of people that you already know, do you have advice on that? I would go with the flanting thing with people I already know, because that is, am I, am I saying it right? Flanter, flanter. flanter. flanter and fla flirting. And flanting. <laughs> <laughs> no, flirting and flanter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I can do that much easier with someone I've already met a couple of times than I can with a stranger. But if it, also, what I would like people to do, if I was the, the girl standing against the wall and someone wanted to come and talk to me, because I'm instantly like awareness radar f like flashing if a guy hits something in a bar, unfortunately, because that's just what's happened in my life. But if he came up and said something funny... Yeah, humour is the kill, yeah. Or, I mean, this is really bad politics, but also if you take up smoking, it's so much easier to talk to someone in a smoking area. It yeah. just is, like, it's a social, like, people feel obliged to, like, huddle together in Borealisha and be like, oh, are you enjoying the band? And, uh, yeah. You know, like, also, don't be afraid. I mean, whenever I've done this as well, like, maybe flirted with someone, I was just like, hey, yeah, I'm probably flirting with you now. Yeah. Like, they just be open, you know, like, let me know. Perhaps this is not okay. Perhaps you're, like, taken or something like this. Like, that's absolutely fine. Like, 
yeah. it's okay but yeah it's just like life is short i think you're pretty why don't we talk exactly and like the yeah. one time i've done that actually was on my birthday when i was in copenhagen and i just got really drunk i went to this girl and i said by the way i've been looking at you all night and i think you're really pretty and i just wanted to say that and she said thank you so much and gave me a hug and i didn't feel bad because if it is just someone you've bumped into you might not bump into them again and if you do bump into them again all they're gonna think is oh that's that person that thought i was nice looking or nice sounding or nice engaging and that's not a bad thing like yeah the embarrassment of hitting on someone is only really a big thing if you hit on them in a overt way totally like, yeah yeah and if they have the space to reject you in a very overt way yeah. you know but if, you, if the cards are on the table you know like yeah i mean if you're just basically genuine and friendly and sympathetic like what is the worst that they can say like i have a partner already like mm. i mean then then yeah well, that's fine then they do you know and and that's that and then you try it yeah. somewhere else like it's yeah, yeah just honestly it's... just be genuine on that on that front yeah try to think of the funny lines compliment someone's outfit or the hair or if there's a band then talk about the band like there's so many starting topics that can get a feel of the other person as well because yeah you might think they're super fly engage them and realize they're boring as fuck oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that happens as well. That happens. Yeah, but also, yeah, as I say, always just make sure you you're kind of leaving the house feeling confident as well because if 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 you're lacking in confidence then like that will definitely reflect and then the person will feel like they have to encourage you at the mm. same time you know and that's just labor whereas you know if you want to sort of like lift them up and, and make them feel special then you have to feel special yourself I but suppose. my problem that always happens to me is that i leave the house feeling fly and i arrive at the party and i'm like fuck i'm overdressed Look at like we hang out with like <laughs> crusty punks and so like if I turn up in my like awesome sequin dress it's like this is totally everyone else is wearing like cut off shorts over leggings why did I not remember this okay like, that's too niche probably okay, <laughs> but it's true like I, I have often left the house feeling like the hottest thing this side of like Mother Teresa and I like, arrived at the party feeling like Yoda like <laughs> I don't know where my references are coming from but <laughs> that's so, great you know. Um, but yeah, then you have to wear it with confidence. Like, remember that everyone looks at the person looking stunning. Nobody thinks that person is overdressed. Also, you think you're overdressed, but do you think those people don't feel like they're overdressed with all of their, you know, paraphernalia? Like, they are dressed up to their own, yeah, of to their own um, aesthetic as well. That's true. Yeah. Um, in terms of like. Um, if you already know that person, I'd say arrange very spontaneous activities, you know, oh, okay, we're going to Parliament Hill to for a swim now, or, well, not Parliament Hill, maybe Hampstead Heath Ponds or something, or, or you know, organize hangouts with a lot of people, like, okay, you know, seven of us, we're going to this concert, or, like, organize little dinner parties and stuff like that. I think, again, as long as you have, like, other stuff going on, I think that sort of definitely uh, attracts another person. Yeah, I would, yeah, I'd rather go with someone to, like, a house party than have a one-on-one -on -one date quite a lot of the time, just because there's a lot of more pressure on that, like... Yeah, and you can bounce off of more people yeah. then, yeah. Right, um, just Shall we... 20 past, I think, yeah, we should probably move on to the next one. Do you think I can reach my coat with this long extension lead? Uh, sh sure, okay, yeah, so okay. Oh then. gosh, I haven't done this before. Yeah, okay, I have to, um, I suppose, entertain you. Again, um, yeah, we've received a really wonderful feedback off of you, which is really, I guess, um, you know, thanking us that we're sort of trying to, that we're very kind of open and vulnerable and trying to tackle these issues. However, definitely you guys are the ones doing the heavy lifting asking yes. us the questions and and you know liking or commenting and reflecting for instance i was even you know i share it on twitter all the time and stuff like that and i don't know maybe that's just my own conspiracy that not many people are engaging with it on social media because it is embarrassing to 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 even say that oh that's something that i struggle with or that's something that would be useful would have been useful for me or something like that you know and uh yeah, I think so too. I think more people are engaging than actually are admitting they're engaging. Yes, actually, yeah, the views are through the roof, by the way. <laughs> I have the analytics. <laughs> There's a lot of people watching this, but not that many people like sharing it, and I get it, but I mean... Also, send us a private message if you don't want to say it publicly, because we really appreciate all the feedback yeah. we are giving. I mean, obviously, we'd rather you share it and get it fucking famous, because hello, we're doing it in our spare time. But <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, just really... Um, 
thanks so much, and we see you, and, and, and we love you, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Now you're going to have to stop a little bit, a little bit, because I just went to check that everything is going well, and okay. we're going to move on to the next question. Drink up, hope you're warm, it's snowing, snowing outside, yeah. it's fucking gross, and like, but it's not like Christmassy snowing, it's just like no, ruining my hair oh. snow. Oh. I mean, you know? Well, I had a nice little picture taken of me earlier on my Instagram. Um, <laughs> oh yes, please uh, follow Rowan on all of the things. Maybe if not Twitter, then tell your Instagram. No, my Instagram's what, what private. The? It's just selfies of me. I mean, that's Instagram. <laughs> but okay, I'm just gonna check that everything is okay. If you follow me on Twitter, I post about once every three weeks when I come up with a pun that I think no one else has posted before, and then I Google it and find out someone else has already come up with it, but I post it anyway. So that's my Twitter, if you're excited about that kind of thing. My recent one was questioning why Snakes and Ladders is not called Adders and Ladders. Why? <laughs> oh, are we done? Good, do I have to do um, this? Eight viewers! Well, hey! Yeah. Hello to all right. of you! There are quite a few likes, which is lovely. Um, the great 11 viewers! 11. Gosh! This is great! Alright. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the next question. Number I might like nick a pop. Sorry, yeah. mum, but it like, is what it is. Uh, sorry, people who said we can't smoke in this space. <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah, by the way, kudos to. Um, yeah, do you want to... What, the shower? Yeah, might as okay, well. Okay, well, um, we're currently in D Centre, which is a um, anarchist social centre based in the Freedom Building. It's a really cool, um, autonomous, self-run social space, like, free to use, lots of groups and individuals use it, and we're really thankful that they've let us do the filming here because, you know, that's the state of London where the anarchist social centre has better <laughs> Wi-Fi than the, like, two-up, two-down house, but... Yeah, we're very grateful and thankful to be here and come visit Freedom, come to D Centre, come to London and look at all the cool lefty spaces we have. Though we might be the nicest anarchos out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone's really in their own scene, so... Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay, second mm. question. This is a good one. I mean, the last one was good. That all No, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. It's just some that we have like more, I suppose, like personal yeah. stories about. So, how do you talk dirty in a way that doesn't reinforce the patriarchy? Wait. Oh, have I missed one? What about... Oh, shit. Well, never mind. We'll have to do this one. Okay, now. let's just ask. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay, okay. How do you talk dirty in a way that doesn't reinforce the patriarchy? Okay. Okay. So some of it we've already covered in um, episode one, the second question. So please do, do, do look at, at that because basically the question was like, how, do I, how, um, how should I be a dominant person in a BDSM sexual relationship uh, without, uh, without, yeah, without, without it seeming like I am um, just, yeah, I guess, reinforcing patriarchy. But again. I guess we talked more then about like the like, consent and like the power of subs and not as much about like the language part, which is you quite... See, I, I, English is my third language. I this is I, I don't do this that much. I must say. Which is your favorite language to talk dirty in? My mom, when she's angry with me, she talks in Russian. So I, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, Freud is thrilled right now. <laughs> no, no, but like I, I don't know enough. Well, I can speak Russian, but and swear in Russian, but sadly not enough to. Uh, go for it because in I that had this sense interesting experience when i was in vienna i asked my viennese housemates about dirty talking because and they said they they do it in english because in german dirty talk is really like cringe fascinating yeah so even though they're little like german speakers instead of being like oh yeah yeah <laughs> speak me harder like no that's just like terrible they were like we, we, we don't they, we do it in english that's so weird. So we're like, the universal well, I guess language watch. Sex. Yeah, I guess the, a lot of porn is in English and all that stuff. Like a lot of porn I watch is like Russian. <laughs> Great. Um, Zabies, <laughs> plat. I mean, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, to get back to the question. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Right, how to talk dirty in a way that doesn't reinforce the patriarchy. This is... Now... <laughs> no, thing. honestly, I just... I don't know. Okay, well, I'll start and maybe you'll be able to maybe. think of what I'm saying. So I had this conversation with someone yesterday um, about... <laughs> about, like, how to... Yeah, and I was like, you know, you just say, like... The thing I'm trying to say is that there's a difference between calling a woman a bitch and calling a woman a bitch in bed. <laughs> and as one thing being like, make me a sandwich, bitch, or move out of the way on the pavement, bitch. Another thing being like, get on your knees, bitch. 
I'm just saying. And it all comes down to basically the trust relationship you have with the person with whom you're engaging in dirty talk. Communication beforehand and consent. And like, is that person the type of person that hates women? I don't like the word bitch, personally. See, but I But that's do. just yeah, me. Exactly. I mean, like, but that's the sort of conversation yeah. I would have because with the partner, I guess. I literally yesterday said, I give you consent to say bitch in bed. Like... Brilliant. Yeah, but obviously we had that conversation. Ooh, before. slut though. Slut the spy yeah, with like, me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, all the mystique is gone. Oh, no. You've just tuned in. This is bitch Rowan and slut Mariam talking for the NHS. <laughs> Doctors. <laughs> Doctor Bitch, Doctor Bitch, and Doctor Slut. Oh no. my God. Um, oh yeah. Our but parents are like, so like, proud, right? But now. we have different things that we are okay with or into yes. or whatever. Um. Uh yeah. So like dirty talk. One thing I would not do is leap into dirty talk on internet messaging, unless it's like been already established that like, you're like sexting. Because like if I get a random tech like text on Tinder from a dude being like you look like such a hot bitch, I'm like no. So the, okay, so are you are you different? Well, no, it's just because I don't I don't do s okay. I receive and I don't give because I'm worried it's gonna be screenshotted and this is really mm. bad. But like it is what it is. I'm a public person or whatnot. And like yeah, I'm nobody, so I can like sex all I want. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of I kind of draw a line there, which is weird. Like I mean, even if I just receive it, it's probably already weird. But um, yeah, I kind of I don't I don't go there. Okay, well. But now it's already even been recorded. Yeah, it's it's been 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 live God, video. one day when I'm going to pretend to be a real human being in the world, this is all going to come back at me. So, but you know, like, I don't know. I look at Alexandra yeah, exactly. there Ocasio Cortez, you know, and she's just keeping it 100 at, one, it, at all yeah. points. It's just like, yeah, fucking, what this are you going to do? Generation. What like, are, yeah. Everyone drinks and smokes and fucks. It's like, yeah, it's fine. That's kind of the best parts of life, anyways. Yeah. So yeah, so that uh, well, not smoking maybe that's bad for you. <laughs> drinking is great for you, but, <laughs> but the, yeah, there's a few different things: dirty talking on Messenger, dirty talking in person, and dirty talking in a sexual situation. And I yeah, and like on Messenger, I'd be very fucking careful at the beginning because it can come across as like, like, and not in a good way. Like, but once you're in the bedroom. Reinforcing the patriarchy only happens if you are reinforcing the patriarchy. Yeah. Like, being a dom or being a sub doesn't inherently create a patriarchal situation. 100%. And therefore, using, like, language... Like, language is fluid. That's, like, a very cliche thing to say, but, like... It's whatever you decide on that particular point yeah. that it's going to be. Yeah, and again, it's just sort of, I guess, if you can, just uh, definitely have a conversation beforehand with your partner as to what they're comfortable with, you know, because sometimes... You know, even even with the dumb stuff, I go like, you know, um, yeah, be dominating, but don't be rough, you know, right, like, because yeah. that's, too, that's too much or stuff like that. And, and um, yeah, and I think, again, as we talked about this in the, in the episode one, it's just like we sometimes like giving away control and um, being, you know, sort of so presentational at all times is fucking exhausting. And... Um, Sometimes it's good to just sort of let it go. Um, yeah. Being told what to do when you want to be told what to do, that's not patriarchal, that's like taking a weight off my shoulders. Like, yeah. please tell me which position to do because I can't be bothered to think about it. <laughs> yeah, and also it goes both ways. Like, I mean, um, perhaps your partner is doing, you know, like again, like, the, you know, a, a woman could be very easily just very, very terrible to, to, to her dude, you know, in these sort of conversations, you know, like... So, so I don't think it's a, I don't think it's necessarily like a, a patriarchy feminism sort of thing. Well, I mean, I can see, I can see why you would arrive to that conclusion because I mean, if the dude is a misogynist, then he's going to be a misogynist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, like, a, I mean, like, women can be rude in that exact yeah. in that scenario as well, you know. So it's just really, if, if there is, if 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 there is an opportunity to establish with your partner as to um, what sort of terms are not okay with them, then then that's that. Yeah, like just having that conversation in a pub can be quite a, like a fun pre conversation pre, to pre, have. Pre, pre dirty talk at the end yeah. of things. Yeah. And also there's also like you might miss the mark and say something that's too far or wrong and if she says she's not okay with that, fucking apologize. Yeah. Be like, I'm sorry that was too far. I should have checked you that that's okay. And then you're not an asshole. You're just someone that made a mistake. Like it's it's completely fine. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's yeah. that you find to test something, like, to be like, I really want to see you on your back. 
bitch. <laughs> and then she's like, no. And you're like, okay, I want to see you on her back, please. And yeah, then it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, like I say, it's really got, boils down to your... Um, I suppose your disposition or like your the way that the way that you present yourself you know and if you are caring and if you're willing to 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 learn and all of that stuff like and if you're genuine being like look this is what I'm attempting to do I might slip but you know this could be eternal and let's see what happens then um then yeah there's a lot of space for that I was just thinking about what you were talking about on the first episode because in some relationships in a lot of relationships there's a difference between your dynamic in the bedroom which may be one of domination and submission where this kind of language is part of the play and one in like real life or whatever where it's like much more mutual and like discussions about feminism and politics blah 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 but then there are also situations where people want to be dominated in an everyday sense which mm. yeah we still haven't received the question about that which is really no, upsetting but that's also a thing like if we're talking about dirty talk in like a non like bedroom scenario that is also again it's a matter of consent but that's also a different like another dimension i suppose right yeah yeah because you get like again we referred to it in episode one but you get relationships sometimes where the the man literally like orders everything mm. well i mean in a certain sense as to what the woman is meant to do what is she eating uh you know what uh, i don't know what exhibition she's going or not going to and stuff like that and yeah. and i mean one could say that's that's re-establishing patriarchy. Other could s- uh, the other person adults. could say, yeah, this is actually a really sexy yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And again, we're not caveating as much anymore because because like we've received quite a lot of feedback and with our last episodes that we maybe caveat a bit too much and basically you should just trust us and maybe watch the previous episodes that we are like hardcore good anarcho-feminists all of that stuff and we really are just trying to attempt to have a slightly more nuanced conversations around these topics and yet if we fuck up please be in touch yeah. with us and let us know yeah um, because we in, are in no way like condoning abusive behavior or yeah like, man like if you're a dick you're a dick and yeah. fucking gonna call you out on exactly, that like. exactly like i have no qualms i'm like chopping off a rapist balls and eating them apart from i wouldn't eat them so that's the qualm. But that's <laughs> Give the it to qualm. the cat. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Have we answered the question? Well, well yes. I How mean, do again, you talk without reinforcing no. But this is interesting. Again, it was someone that is that is you know, um, I suppose wishing to do such things, mm-hmm. and however, wishing to be a good feminist at the same time, and and um, we're just trying to, I guess navigate that yeah. in a nuanced manner and I think I think we have you know we've given you I guess the so sort of the the go to do that and yet I think as always it just needs uh, further uh, conversations w- with your partner and as ho- how far yeah. they want to be made like our little bitch and sl- things like are actually pretty vanilla yeah as to the sort of stuff people actually get on with like get up to sorry and and so you know there there's way more yeah. than stuff out there and, and again you know really Okay, as long yeah. as it's between two consenting adults yeah. who, you know, yeah, if you want to be cool, I can't even think, I'm so unimaginative. No, well, like, we don't need to describe okay. those really, <laughs> those really in- intense things, I think, but, um, yeah, basically, um, perhaps you think we didn't even touch on, like, the more hardcore um, ways dirty talking could be happening, but, um, but yeah, again, that's up to up to you and whoever you are with. And again, perhaps the question could be like, how do I even open a conversation about the fact that I do want to do dirty talking? Well, I guess yeah. you literally go like, hi, I was wondering, how could I open such a conversation? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, just like, I, hey, are you, are you into like conversation in bed? Because I'm just aren't into talking at all and be like, okay, would you be into like this or this or this? Like, yeah, that's how I did it. Yeah. Um, I, oh, fuck, I just had another thought that's relevant to this, and I've forgotten it. You know, you can think about it. I was just yeah, like, sure. just, um, even, even just in general, sounds. I remember one time someone just like turned on the music while we were at it as such, and and I thought, wait, 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 why do you need music? Surely silence is better to play, you know, and like in general. And actually, down the line was fine, etc. But, um, but yeah, it's basically, it's not even just words, it could be just sounds or lighting, different things that different people like in different ways, and um, yeah, interesting space. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. Well, maybe you'll remember. Maybe I'll remember it and just blurt it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay, shall we right. next one? Yes, yes, I'm just going to check on the things okay. a little bit again, but um, I guess... I'll do my thing. Yeah. Hi. 
if, if you're just, just tuning yeah. in, yeah, exactly. I remember the way you look. <laughs> Hello and welcome if you're just tuning in to NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Marianne. I'm Rowan, this is Marianne. Marianne Dr. Is Dr. Rowan, Dr. 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 Marianne. <laughs> and Dr. Marianne. We're here to service your needs. No, it sounded weird. Um, <laughs> um, um, changing the subject. Um, we're actually thinking of rebranding as Anarcho Agony Aunts because someone said that and actually it's very cool. Um, so if you think we would be better off as Anarcho Agony Aunts because NHS lefties have been confusing some people. For example, I said to someone yesterday that I had the NHS this evening and she was like, oh no, I hope you're okay. And I was like, ah, right, God, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> not what I meant. Um, so, yeah. Thoughts on rebranding? Let us know. Is Seven gonna... people watching. Come oh, on, shit, guys, dropped... honestly. Four, five? Four? Like four or so. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Maybe it was all too dirty. Maybe people are like, I don't know. Oh, hi, mum. So, <laughs> so, that's our excuse, anyways. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely not the content. <laughs> well, it is the content. But... No, but again, like, some people watch it, you know, um, during while it's streaming, and then a lot of people watch it uh, afterwards, which is nice. All right, let's do this. Oh, yeah, okay, this is, is the this one. This one, right? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. No. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay, so yes, I got them in the wrong order. So it says, maybe a silly question for the NHS for Lefties show, but I've got to ask somewhere. I'm a queer guy who has mostly dated men and mostly slept with women, but in recent years I've also developed an interest in women. I've not, for lack of a better word, been socialised in straight de dating, hookups, etc. Though I would like to get more sexual and maybe romantic experience with women, but I'm usually too nervous or unsure how to go about it to make a move. I am hindered by one, lack of, lack of experience for how straight flirting works, two, fear of being a dickhead like so many het men are, and three, sexual nerves because it's more unfamiliar territory compared to guys. Do you have any advice? Thanks in advance. Do you, are you okay with covering one and two and then we cover three together? Oh, no. no, I'm just thinking because to me it's, it's a similar question to the first mm -hmm. one really. I mean, obviously there's the added um, layer of, 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 of someone transitioning, well not transitioning, I don't know, just like including women in, in their sexual lives as well or romantic lives um, from just the dudes. But in general, I don't know, this seemed to be just another sort of like how to flirt with people. Yeah, actually. I mean, I guess, I mean, I can relate in as much as I found dating women harder than I did dating men because I think like even though we're all like feminist blah 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 subconsciously there is an expectation that comes with gender roles that I think a lot of us buy into I certainly buy into wherein I know how to talk to a man without seeming this this or this more than I do with a woman because even as a woman I'm still like how do I be forward how do I this because I'm so aware that she might have all this baggage of all the bad things and so I completely relate to that, actually. Like, having someone who only recently started, like, hitting on women, it's, like, fucking terrifying. Yeah, like, I'm much more comfortable hitting on men. And it's, like, yeah. Wow, that's so weird. But then, yeah. That's so interesting. This is, this is why it's great that, again, that, it's, that I'm doing this with you. Because, yeah, you do give this, like, incredible, like, queer perspective, etc. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Continue. I just wanted to put it out there. No, that, that's Happy really to be good. queer. <laughs> no, no, no. But, you know, like... Yeah, I think that that's such a valid point. Um, so, okay, lack of experience about how straight flirting works. I mean, I think we covered that maybe in the first question and also yes. in um, a question in the episode one. The last question um, of episode one. Oh, no, the no. first question of episode one. The and first maybe question. one of the questions in episode and two. And the last episode of, sorry, the last <laughs> question of episode two yeah. as well. Um, yeah, we've talked quite a lot. We're also, by the way, just to say, after the season is done, we're going to cut up the, 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 quest well, yeah, the, the videos, videos into, into shorter question. thingies. As yeah, one video per question kind of thing, so they're more bite-sized. <laughs> um, fear of being a dickhead like so many het men are. I mean, yeah, be scared because it's a thing, but also I think our question about how not to be a creep hopefully answers that. Yeah, yeah, it's all really just about you being aware that you might be and then explaining that and not being that. Really. Yeah. <laughs> But if we haven't, um, if you need more, then please send us a, another question. Like, yeah, we'll cover it. And then number three, sexual nerves because it's more unfamiliar territory compared to guys. Interesting that this is the part you. Well, man. Okay, now let's talk about nipples. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just. Oh, like, you mean like actual? Well, yes. Because oh, what just else? Me. Okay. No, I'm just thinking. Yeah, like, okay. all right, let's, let's do nipples. this. <laughs> okay, tip number one: don't do that. <laughs> We're 
off the rails today. I love it. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, this is great. I'm staring at your Sorry. tits while we're live on Earth. No, no, so this should not. I'm like, it shouldn't be visible, and then I visibly remove it. <laughs> this should not be here. <laughs> No, I don't know. I'm so wary of my own video and okay, stuff. Okay, let's talk about nipples. Well, no. Okay, so let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's fine. We're 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 only oh, housemates. We're not, yeah. not got there yet. No, I don't think we will. All right. No, no. Oh. It doesn't seem like a thing. Like remember when we almost had a foursome, but it never really happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that happened. That's oh my thing. god! We might not be able to see that NHS Jesus if we had done. fucking Christ! Yeah, that was back in the day. Hey, what 2014? Yeah, no, but in general, I'm just thinking I am so revealing too much here. But what oh, can you do? What can you, you do? I, that means I definitely am. I think I'm being more explicit than you. No, but you know, like I'm attempting to. Pre- well, I know I'm pretending to be a real human being, and you know, they're like literal potential employers watching probably potential i don't know like actual academics Women lectures all of that like stuff shocker, like but yeah right like daily mail like yeah i don't know i definitely have to, i'm sorry this is totally tangent but again you just have to sort of i guess see deal. us deal <laughs> uh deal yeah it's just like i i think this is really important and i think it's a very political project always in my head i'm battling over the fact that yeah i guess i'm just like little working class hustler trying to make it in in this whatever you know games industry content creator sort of thing and yet i'm pushing buttons and making myself unemployable more and more all the time because yeah that's definitely not helpful you're meant to be like you know again probably as a woman as well like you know a bit mysterious and a bit just like you know reserved or or just i don't know just you without like, opinions, etc. And I'm just like out there. You're and not going to go to your job interview and be like, hi, I'm Marianne. Let's talk about BDSM. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, <laughs> no, sure. But um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm wary that. Yeah, um, it's a thing. It's a bullshit it's, thing. But it's yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, going back to the question. Right. Okay. So. You want to talk about nipples? I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. No, I think we covered the nipples. You know what to do with them. It's good. But okay, so I mean, things yeah, like men have nipples too. So okay, so yeah, I'm actually yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, so things that like I don't know, somewhat turn one on in mm. that sort Very of sense. Very subjective. Very subjective. Stroking of the back. Oh my god! Back especially of the neck. like back, especially like that bit. Mm. Oh my god! Oh my days! That's a thing. That's a thing. That's for thing. sure. Then definitely, like, as bad as it sounds, definitely, like, Google a few things as to what works on the bits. And then um, there, it's also super, super subjective. But, or, like, like genital stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. I'm- but, you know, but this is interesting. Someone's literally like, okay, for the first time I have to, like, learn how to please this. So how do we do this? I mean, one thing I would say as, like, a general tip, like, when in doubt, have lube available. Because not all women have the same kind of bodies. Not all women get wet the same way. Like, it doesn't mean they're not into you, but just, like, have lube around, doesn't yeah, hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's, like, the whole, like, front bit, but back bit, too. But then back bit doesn't make sense, because it's not part of the clitoris, but But I feel still. like if you slept with men... Love London anti-fascist, then we talk about clitoris, well, hey. No, like, if you, if you slept with men, he probably knows how to do the ass, right? So, but, but yeah, but basically, but, no, but, but, well, I don't know, people, people with vagina and such, they don't have, um... Prostate. Prostate. Yeah, so don't expect necessarily to get an orgasm out of anal, but it doesn't mean she doesn't enjoy it. But ask before you do anal, general general point. Well, yeah, no, no, of course, but I'm just thinking, like, there's that bit at the back, and no one really... What bit are you talking about? Okay, okay, subjective the then. Perineum? The so... perineum? What bit? <laughs> <laughs> so those who just tuned in... <laughs> You mean, you, you talking about someone's ass or you talking about the, the No, back? the back the bit of the... Back. No. Do you want to like point it to, on me? <laughs> <laughs> the back bit of the of the vagina. Yeah, the perineum. Oh, is that mm, it? Very sensitive. <coughs> Great. Mm. Good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Where do we go from that? Um, yeah. <laughs> But like, Shh. basically... It's Season right. finale, what can you do, you like, know? Try- I can't go like, my thing <laughs> I have this like need to like gesticulate when I'm doing things. I'm like, I'm no, not same. Like, fingering someone, but like, try things out gently, and you can normally hear whether or not she's into it. Like, if you're like, if you're like starting on the clip, 
and moving down. And if you get the perineum and you get like a twitch or like a vocal like mm -hmm, response, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. But, but like. But a clit is bigger than you think, da -da -da, all of that stuff. But when the clit also gets bigger, like you might yeah, yeah, be like, yeah, 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 what, yeah, yeah. what, what, what? But then by the end you're like, oh, there it is. Neck as well, very sensitive mm. area. Um, How are you with ears? If it's not very wet, mm. yeah. Bum is great. I mean, just the cheeks. Yeah. Feet. Are you? A, I was gonna ask about feet. I'm not a feet person. But I'm always so insecure that my feet smell that if anyone ever goes near my feet, I'm like, don't because I'm so sure my feet smell. Like even though I like it, it's just like it's a huge paranoia and I can't be comfortable with it. Also, something to be said about like just not kiss. Okay, we should probably terminate this question honestly because now this is Why? just this becoming is like. <laughs> no, but this is this is not necessarily just for women as well. I was gonna say like something to be said about just like not kissing and like like not allowing to kiss. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I don't really, I don't really want to kiss. But this is not sex. necessarily. This is basically not necessarily just like for 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 ladies or whatnot. This is, I think, quite universal yeah, in general. Yeah, that's a general thing. So yeah, but, but no, I, I don't know. like kissing during sex because I can't concentrate. <laughs> but, but, uh, subject cir circumstantial. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Okay, good stuff. Brilliant. This is where my like my prude side comes out. Yeah, right. I'm. I'm. I mean, no, it's fine. I'm not shaming you. Like. No, um, no. It's just. I'm like <sighs> acting out to finger someone. Like, <laughs> <"Sing my laughs> That's I love you. <laughs> God, but again, season finale. What can you do? This is us, you know. And also, like, um, like obviously an obvious point, but like every woman takes like different amounts of time to come yeah, and stuff yeah, like that yeah. and also a lot of women don't come don't come for penetrative sex or don't come at all or like but also after, after boozing as after well after boozing oh my god such it's a long thing it's a drag. long thing yeah. yeah it's the worst you're like you're doing everything right and i'm just like here like a like yeah, yeah, yeah. boat on a ice lake it's terrible yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, right. Have we answered that question? No, okay, so basically, I think we have, sadly, so annoyingly because like we just have to move on. Um, we have answered this question, the, your question, in like either other questions or other episodes We're as well. We're okay with time though. We've only been 40 minutes. We only have. Don't have three left. Yeah. And with We're other episodes left. as well, so please. And we're gonna cut them up into shorter episodes if you don't, if you, into shorter segments if you don't have the time to do it now. Um, so hopefully that will answer it there. Um, and then yeah, I don't know. Like you'd be surprised just how little people know and understand women's bodies. Like yeah, yeah it's okay not to know and to ask and to try things. But yeah, try yeah. Things gently, but not, basically, not if you do know, then you're like you're up there. You're up there. If you know what you're doing, like you're up there and like she's gonna come back. It's gonna, um, it's gonna yeah. be good. Take time. Because sometimes it takes time. And same both ways, you know, we yeah. totally understand that it's like Yeah, like some guys take ages to come and that's okay too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That like, you know, we're like, ooh, you know, we need dudes that are really, really good at this or whatnot, like <laughs> we've been terrible at it as well, probably, you know. Well <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> no, I, was, I was actually thinking, I was like, have I been terrible at it? I mean, I actually think I'm getting worse at blowjobs. <laughs> okay, sorry. Maybe this is like, when I was a teenage boy, I'm thinking, yeah. Right, okay. Um, okay, I mean, next question. Okay, no, and, and I, I wish I could bounce back like I do, because I think about it as well. And something, yet, yeah, like, I'm still ashamed, as well, especially as a woman, and that, like, I... So many Reddit threads have been created on me in the past couple of months, you know, like this can just so end up there and then it will just be, I will be that guy and it's terrifying and I shouldn't feel this way because we should be open about this. And, and yet, yeah, I have this fear and it sucks. I'm so unimportant, I can talk about how I'm bad at oh, Shut jobs. up, that, that's not it, that's no, not no, no, it. It's true. No, it's true, obviously you have to be careful. Like, well, I'm not careful. Well, you're more careful than me, which is fine. Like, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I'm j we're just hoping this is of 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 use. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um. Right. Right. I I'm not sure if this has been asked before. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if this has been asked before, but I was wondering navigating dating apps. I'm just getting back in the headspace of dating after taking some time out for myself after the break of a relationship early last year. Anyway, I've plunged into the dating app world and made profiles on Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge to experiment a bit. Any suggestions you can make for non-macho dudes who aren't muscle freaks or care for good or witty, or wait, or care for or good at witty chat up lines? 
Ah, or who care for and are good at witty chat up lines. Also, what's your preference or general etiquette in terms of asking folks out on dates? Should you speak a bit first or just cut the messaging back and forth and go straight for IRL hangs? Thanks, I'm sorry if these questions are basic. You both rule. So it's okay, so. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we kind of covered this in episode one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, we dropped some viewers. What the hell? Is our explicit material not like too much for you what's going on guys well how many are we on like one like four but the four and hi and hello hi, and, and so hi and hi and yes great. yes thank you <laughs> so yeah i mean in general how to do online dating what is that are we good oh, we got heart oh a little comment as well it says i have to go home and a a a a <laughs> has a great ring to oh. it <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're probably gonna rebrand mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. Anyways. So, so back to the question. Yeah. Online dating. Yeah. So we sucks. sort of covered online dating a little bit in the in the last episode because mm. someone was asking explicitly about it. I mean, what's interesting is that clearly, this is a thing that a lot of people have anxiety about how to do online dating, and so it's good that we're talking about it like more often, I guess, because yeah, like it's come up so many times that everyone is freaking out, like you know, the lack of IRL actual meetings and this is what people are turning to. So. Yeah, I think uh, we are so busy in our lives and no one really wants to be just on another platform and that. So I would say that as soon as you can jump on the IRL aspect of it, the better, the, the sooner, the better. Yeah, because he was asking, I think he, I mean, they were asking yeah. whether to message back and forth or just ask a question. I'm always in favor of just asking a question, but because I'm a woman, if I just say like, hey, cut the chat, let's go for a drink, it's not a threatening or dodgy thing to do. And if you are a dude, you probably have to do a bit of bants before you get there, but please do not do, and I said this before, please do not do, how was your day? Oh my God, like, yes, please. Do? Oh God, no, 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 no. That's like universally. And I yeah. think that's quite universal, yeah. even with like, yeah, no with the ladies that we've spoken with. Because like, you have to get real. If someone's on an online dating platform, you're probably not the only person they're talking to. And therefore, you're probably not the only person they're telling about their day that, that day, like. Yeah. Also, you can totally ask the person being like, hey, why are you on this platform? Like, wh what, what is it that you'd like to get out of this? Well, I mean, there, maybe there's a cuter, flirtier way to, to, to ask that, but we say, hey, so what do you, yeah, wh what is it that you'd like to get out of this, mm. out of this encounter? Um, and then perhaps they would, you know, they're like, oh, just someone to talk to or like someone to fuck. You know, again, there's like, you would sort of, or, or a relationship potential. I don't know, basically you then understand how to even navigate that particular um, encounter? Yeah, because I've gone on Tinder for both. Like, I've gone on Tinder for a relationship and I had one and it was great. And I've also gone on <laughs> Tinder for a fuck and I had one and it was great. Like, but you can't assume one when you have the other, you know? Yeah. And, like, and yet I'm fascinated that they're registered on all of these different platforms. Yeah, Hinge I actually had Bumble. to. Yeah, yeah. So, so Hinge one is, it makes more of, um, it, it, it's, uh, it's more connected to Facebook. So, so it makes connections as to your likes and friends, I suppose. Oh, like, okay. Which is interesting. So I guess it shows your interest a bit more. And then Bumble is the one where women initiate. Oh, I was on that for a bit, but it, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, like, there weren't many people on it when I was on it, like, two years ago, so maybe yeah. it's bigger now. It just seems, it's amazing that you're even, um, you're covering so many dating sites at the same time, because that's, like, a lot of admin as well. I'm wondering if it makes sense to just perhaps focus on, on one, you know, because... I'm also wondering why you're not using OkCupid because I mean maybe I'm like old school or something but I remember when I was on OkCupid it was the best one because you could write quite a long pla you could write quite a long like personal statement that's not the word profile well yeah and you'd also answered like hundreds of questions and you had like a real match percentage based on actual like actual things like but that's a lot of labor death, as well penalty and stuff yeah but for me like you I only want to fuck people who aren't Tories, right? Oh, like, you see, we had this discussion. Yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, but I do. Like, even just for like a shag, I need I need to know that. And so, like for me, it was really useful to know that. Okay, we have ethical principles. Like, even if I just want to bang you, so I'm just like curious why you're not using. Okay so Cupid, apparently, so. Hinge is like oh, is like okay, Cupid, but like snappier and quicker because it shows your interest. But if it's just like Facebook groups that I've liked and I like. Oh well, yeah, then you can like, you can tell. Like, like everyone likes classical art memes. Like classical art memes is hilarious. You'd be so. surprised. Mm. But I wouldn't assume someone that was on my wavelength politic. But then not everyone wants to fuck someone who's on my wavelength politically. Like, <laughs> I'm realizing this. This is why yeah. I don't get laid very much. <laughs> not from the sounds of the podcast. Yeah, that's true. I'm like, blowjob, blowjob. I saw your finger. Like, but, um, no, I'm talking from limited experience. You know how you had a, a, a break to get, like, cigarettes? Can I have a break to reapply my lipstick? 
I mean, it's it's solid. Is it solid? It's solid. Yeah. I'm feeling like I've left a lot of it on the kin on oh, the thinnies. Oh, so, so have I. Like my first one is like an orange smear, but no, you've got the good one. It's, yeah, it's, it's still it's, good. You can still see it. I'm going for the for the sort of like lipstick thing. <laughs> <laughs> for the sort of I'm a strong woman. <laughs> you look like a strong woman. <laughs> see, I'm going for a, I'm a 1950s depressed poet. That. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. So getting back to the question, yeah, I, I don't know. It's thank you so much again for asking, but uh, we I think probably we should refer you mostly to our third question. Well, third answer in episode two and first answer episode one. I think was also about etiquette and date online dating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see if there are specific bits in this question that would be of importance. Oh, okay, so something about like the fact that they're not muscle freaks, or or so. Okay, so this is interesting because yeah, I have opinions about that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, okay, so um, something to be said, I'd say in general about go good photographs. It doesn't matter oh, whether you're like a muscle freak or not. Like, you know, don't just make, don't just do selfies. I mean, you can like some of my profiles are also just Mine just selfies or whatnot. Selfies. But um. I don't know, get someone to perhaps do a few good pictures of you, put a little nice filter to it. I mean, I don't know, like, I definitely just skip through, like, the, the, the blurry, shitty oh, pictures. Oh, yeah, no, it has like, to be a good picture. It, yeah. I like, have several ones because, like, okay, I don't like when people have a group of their friends as their picture because I'm like, which one's you? Yeah, 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 and that's also, for sure. Like, that are sucks. you shagging some of these people in a picture? Like, those, that's what I think, you know. But, like, one of you doing something interesting, like, for example, one of mine, like, not my first one is just, like, my beautiful face that I took in a toilet but my second one is me on stage because I do um, comedy and so it's like it's also a thing for them to ask questions about so if you've done something interesting put a picture of the interesting thing that you've done because that can also be a conversation starter like but definitely invest in the pictures yeah 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 I mean it's very in vain and terrible to say but this but it's just apps are. that's what dating apps are it just yeah. is and I make them yeah I mean I should probably do like a NHS for lefties or an archive the ants practical bit where I literally Literally show you on Photoshop how to really, really enhance certain features, how to like uh, hide spots and stuff like that. I, I don't do it as much as I used to, honestly, like just because I've like given up, like I just have bad skin, like and my eyebrow is good, so like the, the contrast is there, it's fine. <laughs> but um but yeah, there's definitely um yeah, I think pictures are sadly very important and if you can just invest in those and not necessarily get like a professional photographer because one can see one stuff is fake as well but um, you know, just like if you're feeling confident on the night out, you know, just ask your friends to take a few good pictures and, and definitely use those. Yeah, and also if you're like talking to a woman or a, the other person, don't necessarily go for the first per first thing in their bio. Because for example, I put on my bio once a long time ago that I've since taken off, that I studied history. And then every single person asked me about history and I was like, you know what, I don't fucking care about talking about my degree. Like, Well in general so, you don't want to talk about like yeah. that deep stuff on a dating app, yeah, it's like, like mate. Come up with some funny one-liners, opening shots, like a funny meme that makes yourself seem a bit self-deprecating or whatever. Make yourself seem approachable. Yeah. And like, you don't have to do like the muscle shot because I, unless well. I just- Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our difference. But, like, if I wanted to date someone, I wouldn't go for the muscle shot. If I wanted to bang, I would go for the muscle shot. I you don't know. You, you, like, you like muscles. Though. I'm not really into muscles. I'm more into like a good woolly jumper. Like if I like a, no, a woolly jumper on a muscle body. <laughs> that's <laughs> the dream. <laughs> so if you've got both a woolly jumper and a muscle body, call us. This whole project is literally just the way for us to get. No, that's it. not true. No, we're, true. we're both not. Now, no. now Reddit, the now Kotaku in action is gonna just cut that. Bit well, of, they're the Reddit oh, bad the people. Baddies. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But 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 we're good. Uh, <laughs> but um, wait, well, so there was another bit I just read. Yeah, so you've just gone out of a breakup early last year. That yeah, that sucks. Obviously, that's gonna make a dent to your confidence. But it's good that you've plunged into it. Ooh, 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 I have a thought. So so in terms of uh, date ideas, as I sort of I want to go back to the thing that we said at the beginning of the show. There's just Okay, so I'm definitely using London privilege here, but London can be such an exciting place to be and there, there's so many undiscovered little bits like, you know, bits you can drink between two railway bridges that no one knows of and, you know, different lakes or like Shadwell Basin and mm -hmm. just like lots of sexy yeah, little nooks. bits that are like nooks exactly that no one really knows about that you can just create really spontaneous, fascinating dates 
at um, that that people will just feel like they found something new you know I don't know if it's worth it just to go well unless it's a hookup but yeah of course go with weather spoons yeah, and yeah, fucking yeah. home that's fine you know but if some if it's someone you actually want to charm then take them so much charming yeah and London is actually fucking and also beautiful makes, like it makes that. someone feel like you thought about them if you're like hey I'd really like to take you to this thing yeah like it's, it's, a, it's a nicer feeling go to like parliament hill about. and bring some fireworks you know something yeah, like that sparklers. you know yeah champagne, champagne. yeah no but again a communal experience yeah. we're all so uh just just wishing of those more in our lives that yeah something of creating a moment out of it yeah. you know then that would be that's yeah there's something really fascinating there. and if you do want to cut the chat and just ask someone on a date just say like look like I like your profile. Um, if you want to chat more in here first, that's fine. But otherwise, I really love to get a drink and like get to know you a bit better in person because you know, like fuck dating apps, lol. And like everyone agrees, fuck dating apps. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can, there's a way of getting to meet them quite quickly without coming across like a creep. Yeah, that's doable. Like, and be like, look, I'll organize this nice little out thing there, and then you go on like Boris bikes, and perhaps you like throw them into the river. Not that I've ever done. That. <laughs> But if you did, we would not judge. <laughs> but basically, I don't know, like, something to be said about spontaneity and making it feel like you two are just two against the world, you know? Like, that there is just... And this is now I'm going to, to the politics of seduction, okay. <laughs> etc., you know? But, um, yeah, it's just... Make make them feel like they're... Well, not only special, but that there's something in your connection that is... That is united in the struggle against... The sort of alienating lives that we live. Yes. Yeah. That was really nice. <laughs> okay. Alright, should we do the last question? Yeah. Right. All right. This is a great question. We mentioned it earlier. Okay, so I'm so just going to do a oh, little do you bit. Do the summary. Well, yeah. might as well. Yeah. You know. Okay. So this is this is actually really interesting because you know we're, um, me and Rowan. Yeah, we 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 live together. We hang out together a lot of the time, and. Um, and yet we see each other a bit less now because Rowan's in like a honeymoon relationship <laughs> with a with a buddy, and like it's really nice. great. <laughs> but anyways, and then um, but we are in a bit of a mood like, hey, we're we we're doing something really special and interesting here with our project, and and people have been also, you know, giving us very generous feedback and um, lots of it great, some of it very very uh, well advisedly bit more critical in a, in a very very correct sense and I'd like to think we adopted some of it um, <laughs> well no like, they don't want us to digress as much <laughs> <laughs> no but, but then um, other people have told us they like our tangents so yeah you know, we're just trying to keep it natural yes 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 um so we were in that sort of mood, like we are the, the sort of anarcho, anarcho agony ants on Friday night. And we went to a, a, a party and it was, it was, yeah, it was lovely. It was sort yeah. of like lots of like dance music and everyone was like extremely happy and it was great. And yet we felt a bit like, maybe because we didn't know that many people there, we felt a bit like, yeah, but Alien and I were just sort of drunk by ourselves, that sort of thing. Yeah, and we were sitting on the bench on the side of the room. Yeah, the picture with the graph on the wall, like that's <laughs> said on Friday night. Um, and then someone came up with us and um, to us. I don't know. I, I, I was for sure. I, I thought that they must have like seen our show or something because they yeah, were so particular. So like, hey, so what 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 brings you here but not in a weird way not in a creepy way like they oh, yeah, were and they were just way. kept on asking like quite deep questions and i was like are you trying out the techniques that we give yeah. to other people right now on us but we told them about the nhs yeah. and, and they they said it was a really cool idea and they asked us a question yes like, and they were like can i submit the question and then there it is yeah and they just so this is an lesson. irl submission of a question and that awesome. was and we were like fuck that's such a good one because yeah. again we have very different i think takes on this so they said what was the, and we think this is quite a nice question with which to end the third and final part of our like initial launch so yeah what was the biggest lesson you learned from all your relationships? And I remember that I had quite a good answer then, and I've forgotten it now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that ours were different, which is yeah. great again. What the hell was my answer? The biggest lesson I've learned from all my relationships. Okay, sh should I? You should go, I go. Okay, I can... No, on. no, it's just, I've... Yeah. it's just so... <sighs> yeah, I've learned it the hard way, sadly. Um, yeah. Don't stay with anyone that is 
belittling you or 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 not increasing your confidence or you know not that celebrate the sort of indi individual person that you want to be um yeah i've, <laughs> I've been yeah, I'm going real now i've been in a three-year-old relationship a six-year-old relationship another nearly four-year-old relationship, a one-year-old relationship. And I'm not that old, it's just that I'm polyamorous. <laughs> so sometimes they, they, they go together. And so I don't just fuck about as such. I'm, um, if someone loves me, I'm there and I'm there to protect it. I'm there to be with them. And yet, definitely what I've learned is, is that um, when I flourished in my personal life is, is only when someone that I was with was there to, to, to encourage me, to, to celebrate my achievements, to, to was there when, when, um, when I was just like trying out different things and different identities and different um, ways to become a person in this weird London lefty world when we're trying to achieve a better tomorrow, you know, and there's so much cynicism in what we do and I understand that because because everything really fails and we are fucked and, and capitalism is taking us over and and I don't know, I, I think our children is, are probably not going to live very good lives and yet and yet something to be said about someone who is just there to just like push you forward and I have made a mistake probably of staying in relationships where whether that was, I don't know, jealousy or, 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 or their own insecurities or I don't know, maybe they just didn't get it, but um, I wish I wasn't putting myself down because my loved one was saying that that was not worth it or whatnot. So yeah, I don't know, just basically stay only with person that is elevating you and making you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. And um, this probably sounds really cl cliche, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just, I, heard, I definitely learned in the hard way that, um, that, um, yeah, I, I, I will, in those sort of relationships where I'm only always trying to prove myself to the other person, neither I'm happy, neither it will actually last, uh, nor will I, you know, nor will I achieve anything outside of that relationship either. So I, I thank the people that have like elevated me and I hope that the people that haven't are being better to the next people. Um. I guess the biggest lesson I've learned, which is a kind of sad one as well, is that there's nothing you can do to make someone be in love with you. Hmm. Like, you can make someone like you, you can make someone love you, you can do everything, but some just make someone like be infatuated with you and think that you're the bee's knees. There's nothing that you yourself can do. Because I've had, I mean, That's true. I've been on both sides of that equation and I've had the incredible heartbreaking experience of being the one who wasn't as in love as I wanted to be, which was the worst thing that ever happened to me and ended the best relationship of my entire life. And I've also had the feeling over the last two years, particularly of being, I mean, for one, being completely head over heels in love with someone who I th thought was the best thing in the entire world who didn't love me and nothing. And I was, and I know that they thought very much of me and we had a great connection, but it wasn't the same thing. And then with my recent, uh, my, my summer, my summer romance, my, my relationship with um, my girlfriend over the summer where I know that I showed my best self. I know that I was funny and I was witty and I looked good and all of the things that you would like about someone, I, I was portraying them and she liked about me, but eventually she fell in love with someone else. And there's nothing that I could have done better That's and so better true. to have made, to have made <laughs> it work. Yeah. And like coming to terms with that has been huge for me in terms of her, in terms of the person that I left for like yeah reasons I will probably regret for the rest of my life but it was like uh, it was the right thing to do and it breaks my heart that I had to leave them but I did and in terms of my I don't know my unrequited love that I spent the last two years nurturing and eventually I had to give up on and because it was making me unhappy and it was never going to be the thing that I wanted it to be and so yeah like 
you just because someone isn't in love with you doesn't mean you're not your best self and doesn't mean you're not fucking fantastic like I don't have no self-esteem like I know that I'm funny and I'm like decent looking and I'm smart and I'm like good at things and yet that does not mean that people are necessarily going to be in love with me and coming to that that's okay and I can't control that has been the biggest thing that I've learned I would say I think ours pretty much arrive at the same point yeah Yeah, actually yours is like the positive half of mine kind of like no but like don't stay with someone that doesn't make you feel like your best self basically I suppose yeah yeah even if it's sometimes a bit puffed up or whatnot, but you know, it, it's it's tough out there and we're just trying to make it. So yeah. I think you're there in, in our journey, which is really wonderful. I feel like this is meant to end on a high note, it's ending on kind of a low note. No, but, but you know, like the, the, the thing is... But it's it's also, yeah, it's it's it's, it's true. The reason why our, our show has like a bit hit a note and the reason why, um, why, yeah, why it's tricky is because you know, as much as I am a huge lover of technology and all of, and I think, you know, all fully automated luxury and aqua syndicalism, <laughs> all of that stuff. But, um, but you know, there, there is still a huge sense of alienation between us. I don't think it's worse than it's been. I think people have been suppressing their emotions for other reasons back yeah. in the day as well, you know, whether that's just like lack of feminism or anything like that, you know, but I don't think times are somehow yeah, Being emotionally worse. honest has always been hard. Through our history yeah. has always been hard. But there's yeah. basically, there's a need for this, for whatever it is that we're doing. And that does that's not good news, you know, which yeah. there wasn't. So in a sense, sorry, okay. uh, in a sense, whatever it is that we're trying to achieve is, is, is part of the struggle. Yeah. yeah. And also showing that we're, struggling and that we have sadness and we have these bad experiences and that doesn't mean that we're broken or bitter all it means is that we want to try and help nurture a more caring and supportive yeah. and like world full of love like i know it sounds hippy dippy but it's true like no it's situationist yeah, it's great, yeah, it's great. <laughs> like, no exactly um yeah certainly like this comes from like you know a place of of, of empathy and humor etc but we more than recognize that deep inside, you know, we, we're all we're all just trying to make it through the day, and 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 most of the time, whatever it is that sort of tickles our heart. Of course, it is political achievements, but besides that, is is is, is love. And and the the one thing I'm scared of because I fell into this hole before is finding the balance between wanting to be in love and wanting to be loved, and then loving someone and therefore ignoring all the not good things like the things that make you unhappy about that and I think it's kind of what you said in your answer as well or like that like we're all desperate for love but that doesn't mean you shouldn't put yourself first and think that you are the bee's fucking knees like yes you have stuff to work on yes you need to work on your like politics of various oppressions we all do but that doesn't mean ambition yeah everything but that doesn't mean that you're not I don't know yeah (laughs) like you're not lovable, and if someone doesn't love you, then that's not your fucking fault, unless you are a cunt, in case it is. <laughs> but in general, like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think, you know, like, I think even Emma Goldman would definitely agree with this sort of project, you know, no, exactly. Um, it's just, as well, especially as anarchists ourselves, you know, of course, there are other politically left leaning. Um, Labels you can have: social democrat, no, no communist, um, and no, liberal, liberal. liberal. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like that's my critique of all of them is that they don't um, address social relations enough. Mm-hmm. And um, yes. and boy, anarchists are shit at it too. <laughs> yeah. Or it's classist, or all of that stuff, you know. But I don't know. This is, I guess, our attempt to 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 make our political project somewhat more, uh, yeah, empathetic, but also you know yeah the, not be this not this not be some sort of like a top down project as well mm. because like i don't think there's anyone that has like it fully figured out and that there there is no fucking revolution without like good social relations like that there, there's no it. there's no fucking point and there's literally no other political ideology that i can think of that fucking addresses that no no, no. so <laughs> let's hope that we can build an army of uh, I don't know emotionally intact people, and then perhaps we can uh, reproduce that into our 
political organizing and then into our you know workplace that's my syndicalist part yeah. and then into overall takeover of the whatever terrible conditions that we're going through yeah and it doesn't mean like people aren't going to experience heartbreak and they aren't going to cry and they aren't going to hate and they aren't going to be depressed but it just means it's done within a framework that that recognizes a the importance of those emotions and be like where they're coming from and why it is tied in with capitalism like and it is tied in with our repression and alienation and yeah all all those things that you talked about very eloquently earlier that i'm now just buzzwording but (laughs) like yeah it's it's all fucking related social relations matter to shit like i mean you know what emma goldman said like like if i can't dance it's not my revolution it's like if i can't fuck with happiness it's not my revolution either yeah so that's the attempt here um no but again we thank you so much for all of your yeah. um support through this i think this is gonna come back in one way or another definitely oh yeah we're gonna there, be around yeah because it does seem like there's been definitely a thirst for it which <laughs> no pun intended honestly the only reason we did a uh, three part is because we didn't want to burn an, either like ourselves out and our like interpersonal relationship out and that hasn't happened yeah. which has been really amazing by the way can we just do a little celebration of ourselves yeah yes yes i'm gonna start <laughs> <laughs> um i have missed Rowan while she was away for the past two years uh we've been very very intensely closely together because uh, since we've been living together in the past couple of uh, months and you know of course there's a worry what we're gonna start a new project together mm. like are yeah. we gonna gonna fight there's gonna be some sort of like you know egos it's a thing right it's a thing and yet, I think this is why it was the perfection of us doing it together because we have different points of view on this. And also, like again, we also make an effort every time, every day before we start this. We go like because we have maybe we haven't seen each other for a couple mm. of days. We go like, okay, okay, bonding time. Yeah. How have you been? How am I? How, how have I been? You know, like yeah, we're checking in with each other. Yes, yes, because again, we we need to be in a good space to even do this. But also, I don't know. I think we are in a good space anyway. Yeah. It's just that this is added pressure, right? Like we're good in our like general day to day. It's just like okay so we're live now to potentially like a thousand people we need to be like, like we don't want it to become a troll we want to do this because we love it which is why we did like a three-part at beginning and yeah. why we we're so excited actually i think both of us to continue doing this not necessarily every week like we did this time but in different formats or like live we've been invited to do it live which is super exciting and like yeah we well, this this is not going anywhere but it's yeah. been really it's been really amazing <laughs> <laughs> and oh I'm goodness. really happy to do this with you because yeah we come from different places but like geographically emotionally <laughs> yeah. physically mentally spiritually yeah. but we've managed and yeah and hopefully it can be a fuse and hopefully yeah. more of this stuff in the future yeah should all we, right kids call it a day? yeah yeah okay um thank you so much thank for watching so much. oh i'm all emotional it's it's the last no, one. But yeah. yeah but again it's gonna come back somehow it thank you so much for all the questions we yes. hope we've been of use and give us feedback. feedback please give us feedback please yeah. share retweet whatever you <laughs> cool kids are doing these days <laughs> follow rowan on all of the stuffs and uh, yeah keep keep loving yeah and and keep being open about the fact that you love because there's not enough of that in the world not yeah. to be a hippie you you know, we're like anarcho syndicalist hippies if we can even be that anti fash anarcho syndicalist ones anyways. <laughs> so so no, we're keeping it real and yes. we hope you, you sort of got the sort of vibe that we were trying Good to luck. create. Go out and flirt and fuck and start relationships and fancy people and do it all consensually and sexually <laughs> and excitingly and with dirty talk if you want to. <laughs> like we can't wait to see you guys on the scene. <laughs>